Welcome to another video. Recently, I covered some Aider upgrades, but there are even more new updates to Aider, making it even better. So, I thought I'd cover those today. It's amazing to see these projects getting upgraded literally every day, which is just awesome. So, let me tell you about all the upgrades Aider has now and how they make it better. Then, I'll show you all the features in action. Anyway, since the last video, there have been two major version upgrades. Let me first talk about the first version, and then I'll cover the second. In the first version after my video, many error messages were converted to warning messages, meaning that Aider can still function with warnings, making it much easier to use, especially in tough situations where you'd previously get errors. Next, there's a new warning color option, where you can change the color of warning messages. There's also blanket catch and handle for Git errors, which means it doesn't just crash when there's an error on the Git side, which is very cool. There's also catch and handle for global errors, so it doesn't quit abruptly if there's an error while creating a file or something similar, which is great. This helps us fix issues that Aider may encounter without spending more tokens. They've also disabled the built-in linter for TypeScript and added catch and handle for errors produced from terminals that don't support pretty output. The same applies to Playwright, Pandoc errors, and voice mode errors, which is really cool. Also, this release was largely written by Aider itself, which is quite impressive. In this release, there's a major focus on error handling, making it smoother to use and helping to save tokens in error situations, which is very cool. Now, let's look at the latest release. The first thing this release adds is prompt caching for Sonnet via Open Router, which is great because now you can use prompt caching with Aider, even if you use Open Router. This is really cool. It also now enables 8K output tokens for Sonnet via Vertex AI and adds support for DeepSeq V2.5, which is also very cool. There's also a new report command, which opens your browser with a pre-populated GitHub issue based on the error you see in the terminal. This is really great because it makes reporting issues much more hassle-free. There's also a new chat language switch to set the spoken language which is useful if you don't want to use Aider in English and prefer another language. Apart from that, the suggest shell command, or no suggest shell command, now controls both prompting for and offering to execute shell commands, which is also useful. It also now checks key imports on launch and provides helpful error messages if dependencies aren't available. The models mode has been renamed to list models, which is also cool. Besides that, there are numerous bug fixes for corner case crashes, which is always good. And, Aider wrote 56% of the code in this release, which is really impressive. So, those are the upgrades. Now, let's try them out practically, one by one. First, let me show you the warning you get when running it without setting an API key. If I run Aider here, you can see it shows a warning, saying the API key is not set and asking if you want to proceed. This is really good. There's also the warning color option, where you can set the warning color. For example, I've set blue here. Next, there's the chat language option, where you can use it in a different spoken language, like Spanish or something else. Then, there's the suggest shell command, and no suggest shell command options. These let you choose whether or not to get shell suggestions with each command. If you don't use either, shell commands will be automatically turned on. That's another feature. After that, the models option has been renamed to list models, which simply lists the models under a provider. So, if I enter list models for Anthropic, You'll see all the models I can use with Anthropic, which is a handy feature. 
Apart from this, Sonnet's output limit has been extended to 8K tokens when using Vertex, and the output tokens for DeepSeek V2.5 have also been updated. There's also the prompt caching option for Claude Sonnet via Open Router when using it with Ader. To do this, just set your Open Router API key and start Ader with Open Router and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. You'll also need to add cache prompts, and once that's done, it will start caching, which will save you a lot of money. So, that's really, really good. Let me send a prompt here, and let's create something. Let's ask it to make a simple tic-tac-toe game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's generating now. Let's wait a bit. And it's done. Let's approve it here and run the shell command now. Here's the application. And as you can see, it's working really well. And if we look at Ader here, you can see that the cost is very low because it's using caching, which is amazing. So, this is great. Since DeepSeek v2.5 was launched recently, and they added support for it, let's try to create something with it too. To do this, just start Ader with the DeepSeek model, and it will begin. Since I'm using it with Open Router, I'll run it through Open Router. Now, let's ask it to make a Minesweeper game. As you can see, it's working on it now. Let's wait a bit for it to finish. and it's done. Let's run it and check it out. As you can see, it looks amazing. And the cost is also very cheap here, which is just amazing to say the least. So, I think you can now use Ader in even more intricate ways than before, and I believe it still has room for improvement, but it's getting better. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.